So it might not be super obvious, but I am actually standing at the edge of two very different forests right now. If you look behind me, it's, uh, it's a very mixed forest. We've got pine trees, a lot of poplar and oak as well. And I just want to show you this context because we're about to go into a very different forest that has something really cool. It actually has my favorite animal sign in this forest. So strewn all around the forest floor here in the hemlock forest, there are these um, hemlock boughs, which we can actually see um, what the needles look like. They're quite small, um, they're flat, and even the whole way that they come off the branch is flat with kind of like that white underside. Um, it's a good way to identify hemlock trees. Uh, very often when you're in a hemlock forest, they will have these hemlock boughs strewn on the ground um, in, in various places. And if you look at the end, they have this very characteristic way that they've been kind of broken off the tree. And, um, it, you know, it's not super, it's not super clean. It's not super sharp. It kind of has this like extra little, I don't even know how to describe it. It kind of has this um, this multi-layered, there's one and then two, multi-layered kind of cut to it. And this, I discovered a few years back, is done by porcupines, uh, which I love. I love porcupines. I think they're such cool animals. And if you live in a place that has hemlock trees, there's an extremely high likelihood that uh, you have this sign of porcupines in your area too. Especially, I'm talking about like Eastern hemlock. Um, I don't remember ever seeing this on Western hemlock. Um, it could be there and I just never saw it. But certainly Eastern hemlock forests, um, I always find this sign and it's just, you know, it's almost to the point where like if I want to find porcupine sign just find a, a hemlock forest and you're good to go but it does bring up a number of questions um, about what is actually going on here with the sign and this is this is really what I want to talk about it's it, you know in tracking we always want to we want to get really comfortable with asking questions that we don't know the answers to sometimes that makes people uncomfortable you know, because we're trained in school that if somebody asks you a question, you're supposed to get an answer and um, that there is even the assumption that there is a definite answer because um, sometimes there isn't uh, and it isn't always black and white. And um, the more that we can get comfortable with just asking questions, that's really what starts off the whole learning process. The more that you are free to ask questions and just explore ideas and see what you discover, um, the, the more you actually learn. And so we can start to wonder about, you know, what exactly are the porcupines doing when they do this? I, I mean, I think for me, I've always kind of figured it's some kind of feeding sign, like they're, they're up in the trees, and um, porcupines like to feed on cambium, um, the inner bark of trees. And I have seen porcupines feed on the cambium of trees around the base of the trunk before um, on a fairly young eastern hemlock tree. Um, and uh, they, they ate a pretty good chunk out of the bark. Um, but this, I think, is happening much higher up. And so it's almost like they they bite it off and it, obviously you know I can look at this branch and the bark is all intact like they haven't been feeding on the bark here the leaves are all intact um, you know they haven't been feeding on anything there they've literally just clipped the branch off and um, and let it drop to the ground and so my theory on this has often been that they're actually feeding, this is like a sub-branch of the main branch and that they're actually 
what they're actually feeding on is the main branch, the bigger branches that are up high in the tree. And in the process of doing that, either to make it easier to access the bark or um, just by, you know, happenstance as they're sort of chewing their way through, they end up cut, cutting these branches off. Um, but it's kind of cool that you can know when there's been a porcupine in the forest uh, just by seeing these, um, these hemlock branches. So the next question this leads me to is wondering about, well, when does this happen? Um, you know, if I, if I look around this forest, and I'll actually, I'll even show you right now, these hemlock branches are everywhere. And, you know, there's one right here, there's one right there. Um, just as I go back, there's a green spot there and a green spot there and a green spot right up there. And at the base of that tree, um, you can you can almost like anywhere you look at the base of pretty much any tree that's a hemlock tree, they have these. And was this all done in one day? Is this, you know, do they come through um, and do a little bit every day? Or do they hang out here for like a week and just do this? And I just think it's fascinating to, to build that scenario and think about, well, how does, how does this actually happen? And so how do we go about figuring a question like that out? This is what tracking is. It's asking good questions and then having the deductive skills to investigate and actually figure it out. So how do we actually figure this out? How do we answer this question? Well, the next thing that it leads me to is how long does it take for these hemlock branches to age? Because if we could know that, if we could know um, that this branch started aging, at the time when it was clipped and eventually it's going to turn brown it's going to you know um, decompose and it's it's going to show some very clear signs of aging but how long does that actually take and um, to figure this out we're going to run an experiment this is what we need to do as trackers if we want to figure things out you have to find some way of um, getting good data and um, what it, you know, what is an experiment that you could run that um, would actually give you the information that you want to know? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go just off the trail a little bit so that I have a space that's not going to get bothered by people. And we're going to find one example. Because um, if we just try to track all of them, if we try to track all these branches, it's, it's going to be an overwhelming amount of information. So we're just going to find one hemlock branch and I'm going to mark it in some way that I'll be able to come back to it and check on it over and over again. So we can actually figure out, okay, we know it's green today. How long does it actually take before it turns brown? So to run this experiment, I am going to use this little hemlock branch right here. It's got some nice green on it. It looks relatively fresh or at least as fresh as anything else in this forest and uh, it's right at the base of one two three poplar trees actually so it probably came from one of the hemlock trees just sort of right on the side and their their branches intermingle up at the top there and uh, it fell down and landed right at the base of this tree. And so we can come back and we can check on this. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remember, it's just a very distinctive uh, hemlock branch that's, that's gonna be really easy to remember so I can come back to it. It's probably not gonna get disturbed here, um, although you never know, and that'll be part of the experiment too. You know, when we come back, will it still be in the same position? So we can think of a few different scenarios, you know, it's like um, there's a lot of possibilities here. Let's say that these hemlock branches only take one week to, um, to change color, to turn brown. And well, that would tell us that there was a porcupine here feeding within the last week. And it would also tell us that because there's so much green here, all of this was done in the last week. If on the other hand, it takes much longer for the hemlock branch to um, 
to turn brown, which I think it will, um, it gives us a much wider range of time that the porcupine could have been coming through. Where I want to get to with this, um, which I think would be so cool, and I don't even know if it would be, be possible, but is it possible to actually track porcupines? Like how, how precisely can you actually track porcupine activity just by looking at these hemlock branches, you know? Are we, are we say like a few hours behind them? Are we a few days behind them or a few weeks? Where is that porcupine right now? Um, is it possible that this porcupine is watching me right now? Uh, you know, like sleeping up in one of these hemlock trees and I just can't really, can't really even see him. And he, he comes out, um, you know, maybe at night or, you know, times when, when there aren't people around and he just feeds up there. And um, this, is this like a core area for the porcupine? Um, or is this sort of like a feeding area? Um, these are all different questions and I, I don't even necessarily know the answer to these. All I know is that pretty much every time, I've even done this in the middle of winter, I, I come into a hemlock forest and there'll be on top of the snow, there'll be these hemlock branches all over the place. So it is an extremely common sign. Uh, we're in early spring right now, so it happens in winter and early spring. Um, I'll have to come back and check it in other seasons to see what's actually going on. But this is so much of what tracking is, you know, it's just asking questions, going into nature, making observations, and um, running experiments and trying to figure things out. And, and if you live in a place that has the eastern hemlock tree, um, have you ever been to a hemlock forest where, you know, you find a place that um, is predominantly hemlock trees growing in like a grove that actually blocks out a lot of the light and, and makes a forest floor that um, doesn't have an understory. And um, if you do have places like that, go check them out and see if you can find um, this same sign of porcupines. Um, because I think if you're, if you're on the East Coast and you have Eastern hemlock trees, um, I think it's very likely that you would find this too. And so you can maybe go check this out as well and uh, learn about your local porcupines. So that's really all I wanted to share today. I just wanted to show you um, the forest, show you what it's like to be inside a hemlock forest and show you this sign of porcupines to look for. And, you know, talk a little bit about the mindset of tracking and, uh, you know, experimentation as a way to answer difficult questions and how it's really, you know, we asked a bunch of questions in this video. Um, we answered very few. Uh, but that's that's okay and it's really more about just getting engaged in the way that the questions cause us to look at things in a new way and um, develop theories and then test those theories you know this is going to be an ongoing sort of thing where I can come back and I can check on that the progress of my little hemlock branch and um, and we'll maybe learn some things there I hope you found this interesting and I will see you in the next video.